Hi, everybody. Uh, I wanted to come to you because we missed the opportunity to get together this past Wednesday. We had another storm that was threatening, and although it wasn't as bad as we thought, I understand uh, everyone's reluctance uh, in traveling. Um, my own family was uh, hit uh, uh, by the uh, tornado and the uh, uh, floodwaters, and uh, we're still trying to repair our home. So uh, I appreciate that. Um, we started a new initiative called the Human First Outreach Initiative at St. Miriam, uh, and it's a comprehensive approach to homelessness. It places uh, what is at the core of our Catholic faith first, which is the dignity of the human person. As Catholics, we believe that each and every person is made in the image and likeness of the Creator, and that means they have an inherent sense of dignity about them. Uh, even if they're suffering from addiction or if they're in recovery or they're suffering from homelessness, um, if they're an immigrant or a refugee, uh, none of us uh, should treat them differently. And so we decided to increase the way that we outreach. Uh, up to this point, we were using what we called blessing bags, uh, and then we expanded that to do hygiene support, transgender support, uh, but then we also found that we needed to address the addiction, especially in Kensington. And so we started to use safer use kit distribution, uh, Narcan training and distribution, and harm reduction work uh, with the social workers that go with us into our program and onto the streets. Uh, with our distribution volunteers. So we're going to continue all of that work. We're going to continue to provide some nutritional support bags with at least 2,000 calories with our partners, the Joy of Socks and Bombas Socks uh, and Inspire Socks. We're going to continue to provide uh, brand new socks uh, to the people who are experiencing homelessness. We're still going to provide uh, food for their pets. Uh, we're going to provide water, uh, spiritual support, uh, and we're also going to continue to help them with needs assessment, referrals, harm reduction work, and Narcan. Uh, but what we're also going to do is do some wraparound services. And so we're going to do that in a couple of ways. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we have a three-acre undeveloped site on our 12 and a half acre campus here in Flower Town. And we're going to be soliciting donations uh, and also looking for grants in order to provide uh, for a transitional community for those experiencing homelessness. But rather than do it on what they call a continuum of care or a linear approach, where you have to do certain things in order to gain access to the site. For instance, you're addicted to drugs, so you need to go into recovery. Or you're um, an alcoholic, and so you're, uh, you have to stop drinking, and then you can gain a house. We're going to take the approach that they used in Finland, where we treat the individual as a human first, and we're going to give them the housing that they need and then give them the wraparound and support that they need in order to go into recovery. It's not going to be mandated. The only thing that's going to be mandated is that they don't harm one another, that they love uh, and care for one another, that they care for the grounds that they're occupying uh, and for the unit that they're occupying. And then what we hope is that by giving them their dignity back, uh, they will want to enter into recovery and be a contributing member of society. We're still gonna do car safe on the lower lot if they don't wanna go into the housing. We also recognize that our housing facility on a three acre parcel is not going to solve the ills of the world. But if we can solve the, uh, the uh, housing issues for 12 or 24 people or 30 people, it's going to be worth uh, every single uh, ounce of care uh, that we can uh, throw at it in order to help these people uh, and provide them uh, with a way out. We're also going to continue to do all of the support services that we do. We just dropped the name Blessing Bags. We're going to continue to do nutritional support bags and hygiene support kits. Uh, we're going to provide those on the streets. And we also have uh, our tent site that we uh, occupy on Saturday mornings, every single Saturday, where we provide a whole plethora of experienced people uh, to provide food, nutrition, clothing support and referral, uh, and also Narcan uh, and harm reduction work. We're going to add to that uh, by opening up uh, a dinner church site, uh, which is in development, uh, once we are able to uh, release ourselves from the grips of this pandemic. And speaking of the pandemic, I'd like to end there. We are doing all of these initiatives at a time when many nonprofits uh, have stopped doing a lot of work or they've ceased to be. Many churches have closed their doors. Uh, and even though, uh, admittedly, we lost $127,000 uh, during the closure of this last pandemic, uh, and we are seeing a reduction again uh, in people attending mass, which, to be honest with you, I understand fully. Uh, we continue to increase our outreach. Our outreach at, Sem at St. Miriam comes in three major areas. Uh, our outreach to the community to provide an, an open, inclusive, progressive, welcoming uh, community to worship with us. 
all people, all stripes, all sexualities, all gender statuses, everyone is welcome here. Then we also outreach to the educational community, especially children, by providing a wholesome uh, educational experience at the, uh, the region's only Franciscan STEAM school. Uh, some of our students are on full scholarships, many are on partial scholarships, uh, and we do that in order to provide a quality education to those in need. And we also have an outreach. We have an outreach to the homeless. We have an outreach to those that we care for, the living and the dead through our cemetery, and also at our retreat center in Star Lake, Pennsylvania to provide fulfillment and renewal. Those outreach services uh, together with the other two major outreaches create a triangle of wholesome support and love uh, where we're able to show the love of God uh, to people who come to us. This is vital work uh, at a time when our world seems so divisive. I, I hope that you will join us. I hope that you will uh, volunteer, uh, that you will find out more about our programs and we can certainly use more uh, hands uh, to create the support bags that we give, but also the prayers and the financial dollars to, to continue to do the work that we do. More coming up about our Human First initiative, but I wanted to at least give you the interview uh, that you asked for, even though we had to delay it. Uh, please know that I'm here praying for you as we pray for the world. Thank you very much.